Hi, this is Marie, and today we're going to color a glossy black using this cute uh, little wiener dog by Avery L. Um, I'm stamping using Memento Tuxedo Black. This will be compatible with all of your Copica alcohol ink markers or any other alcohol ink marker. Stamping it with my Misty. And you'll notice how on this chunky stamp, you'll see areas um, that are light, some that are dark. I don't worry about that now because we are going to color over them. But you'll notice also, if you look at the other areas, how um, these areas do not have dimension on your chunky stamps. Well, you can fix all of that by creating them with your alcohol ink markers, whichever um, type you have. So we're taking now a T3 and uh, blending out some from our darker color. Just flicking a little bit toward um, the highlight area, but being very careful. Now I'm going to go over the very dark area with a B37. I think that adds a really great tone. You know, it's amazing how many things that we think are black really have so many other different colors mixed in with it. Uh, very little is a true black. And again, we're blending out with our T3 and our T1. Now if you compare that with the others, do you see how dimensional it is? Once it dries, you'll want it to dry fully. You can add and pump up that uh, white um, reflective shadow a little bit more that you always see on balloons. Okay, now we're going to do the other, and we're using our T8 again, our very darkest shadow. And we're blending out with our mid-tone, our T6. Our T3, moving in toward a lighter color, and then our very lightest highlight will be our T1. Not going over uh, that area, uh, saving a little bit where we think we're going to have that white reflective light. Uh, do not color over that area. Kind of keep it very light because we will be putting white on there once it dries. We're giving it a chance to dry now. And we're going to take our opaque uh, white ink and just draw that reflective line where we think that would be, giving that balloon a rounded, glossy black look, but yet very dimensional when you compare it with the other areas that have not been colored yet. You'll find that true with all glossy. This is high definition, so you see it much more than you would with the naked eye. But nevertheless, it is usually flat when you stamp um, with a chunky stamp. And this is a technique you can use regardless of whether it's with a flower, little um, balloon animals, or, or whatever it is. Chunky stamps can be made dimensional. Flicking out with our mid-tone, you notice I'm flicking very narrow, uh, a very um, a small flicking motion, and actually almost running it sideways because I have so little space to get four colors on. And I'm trying to not cover over that one little area where you see I'm, I'm reserving for a reflective light. And again, I'm sandwiching my T8 with my B37 and then my T8 right on top, like we've learned in our other videos on sandwiching the very darkest of shadows. I did allow this to dry, and now I'm applying um, some more. 
reflective light. Again, do you see the difference in the areas we have not added the contrast to? And we're just repeating that same process with our T8. Flicking out with our T6 now. Our T3 and then our T1 will be following. And again, we are not going over the area where we're going to be adding the reflective light later. We're going to darken our very darkest shadow with a B37 and sandwiching it with, again, the T8 on top. If you haven't tried some dark, dark bees in with your black, give it a try. It's a fun way to enhance the shadow, and make it look even glossier by having more contrast. And again, your little um, wiener dog is just getting to be very glossy. All that flat coloration is um, disappearing and he's becoming dimensional. Do you notice I have such small space again I'm flicking almost in a linear direction and over a little rather than directly over into my highlight just because space is so small. Again sandwiching in my very darkest shadow and then flicking out just a little with my two mid-tones and my highlight. Now we have another one to go and we're repeating that same process. I love to try to color things to make them look really super glossy. But one secret will be making sure that your ink does completely dry before you try adding um, the white highlight. Sandwiching the shadow in, flicking out with my mid-tones, and then my highlight. allowing the ink to dry and then I'll just probably pump up all my little white lines a little bit more. I love the Copic Opaque White Ink. It's great whether you're using it on your focal image or your backgrounds. It's easy to use. It's water soluble. You'll always need to stir it up before you use it. And you see the gloss, the dimension, and he uh, definitely has some reflective highlights. So I hope you try this on some of your chunky stamps. And again, things like balloons have a lot of reflection. So uh, you'll notice I'm doing a lot more of a reflective white light than I would on some of the other things that might be clothing. Um, I'm also going to show you how I'm making a, a little envelope. Um, it's fun to try to make your custom envelopes and this one fits perfect. I took my little uh, picket fence distress marker uh, sketched hello or you could put the person's name if you know who's going to be the recipient and I uh, put my greeting on from W9 plus and there you go you'll have a perfect little envelope to coordinate with any card that you make fits in can size them with your, um, you really don't have to have um, 
the envelope maker. Um, if you don't uh, have one, you can make them just as easily with, you know, pretty easy without, but um, I really like to use them. So there you go. Give it a try and have fun. Thank you.